Today I'm going to be demonstrating and reviewing two new products. I'm going to be showing you the new Auric Holiday Collection. They brought out two new shades of their lip balm, so I'm going to be demoing both of those and sharing my thoughts on those. And I'm also going to be demoing and reviewing the beautiful new Natasha Denona Retro Glam Eyeshadow Palette and showing you how I did this look. I'll be doing full swatches of the whole palette and just sharing my thoughts on it as a whole. So if you'd like to see all of that, just keep on watching. So I wanted to show you the Auric Holiday Collection. This is their plush ritual lip balm duo. They've brought out two shades of this. So the original shade of this is almost not a shade at all. It's just a very pale kind of beige. It does lighten your lips a little bit, um, but it's not as much of a tint as these ones. So the two shades in here are Ripe and Haze. Um, you saw the box, it's a really pretty box. So I think this would make a great gift for someone if once I show you the colors and everything, if this seems like something that the person you have in mind for the gift would like. So I'm just gonna take them out of the box and we're gonna start out with Haze. Now I did try these both yesterday, so I already have some thoughts, more thoughts than I thought I would have on tinted lip balm, but there you go. So the package is just the same as the original packaging for the original shade of this lip balm. The only difference is that the little spatula in the top is rose quartz instead of jade. So that's just the kind of special little touch that they've done. I don't tend to actually use the spatula, so I'm just gonna leave that and I'll apply with my fingers. But there's the shade Haze right there. It's described as a sheer luscious muted plum. So let's get it swatched on the back of my hand first. There it is on the finger. So you can definitely shear it out but it does actually build up quite a lot as well. If you left it at more like that level. So let's actually get it on the lips. So I've started with the minimal amount that I feel like I can use to actually cover my lips and feel like they're comfortably covered and like well moisturized. So that's what kind of the sheerest layer of haze looks like, but let's build it up. There's two layers and I'll do one more. You can see Eva has come to join me again. At least you can see her tail. So there's three layers of haze. So I actually quite like this color. I was expecting to like ripe, which I'll show you in a moment, more than haze, just because I was concerned that haze would be like too cool toned. Um, and it is a little cool toned and it's a little more purpley than I would tend to go for, but I think it's still really wearable and a very pretty shade and actually quite unique, at least among the lip products that I have. So I can definitely see myself getting quite a lot of use out of this one and really enjoying it. This formula is truly one of the best lip balms that I've ever used. It's funny because the brand talks about it being you know, their most repurchased product and that's great. But I think the reason it's the most repurchased is because there's so little product in each of these little tubs. There are only three grams in this, so it's very easy to go through. I went through my original one and haven't repurchased it until buying these new shades because gram for gram, it's like the most expensive lip balm I've ever encountered. It's even more expensive than the By Terry Balm de Rose, which is another favorite of mine. It's more expensive than the La Mer lip balm even, so um, you do get a very small amount, but it is really a beautiful formula. And even once it's worn off, like I rubbed off all of the haze shade, but I can still feel that moisturization on my lips. So it is a really very good formula, just extremely expensive. So here's the shade Ripe, and Ripe is described as a sheer, juicy, muted cherry. And it's with the word muted that I begin to take issue because this to me is shockingly vibrant, given what I was expecting from it. So there it is quite sheared out, build it up a little bit. You can see 
see that there. So ripe and haze. And let's get ripe on the lips. So there's the thinnest layer possible of ripe. And I think you can already see that it's quite colorful. Let's build it up. Two layers of ripe. The third layer. It's almost like wearing like a sheer or semi-sheer lipstick to me with how pigmented this is. And to me, that color is not muted at all. Perhaps, you know, I do have very pale skin, so perhaps that makes the color pop a little bit more, but it certainly doesn't have a muted effect on me. Pretty color though, but I definitely prefer haze. Here's the completed look. So you saw me finishing off with these two liners. I used the olive liner from Victoria Beckham, which is a beautiful pairing for the greens in this palette. And then I used the Rose Glow liner from Pixie. I put this just on like the outer part of my lower lash line and then I actually did my whole lower waterline with it, but it looked too dark to me. I didn't like the way it looked in this look. Um, so I ended up covering it up with the Victoria Beckham Brightening Eye Cajal just to add a little bit of brightness back into my lower waterline. I just found that looked a little bit too dark and kind of closed my eye up with this look. So I wanted to get into swatching this palette and I'm um, just going through the shades and the shade descriptions from Natasha. 
And I think as we go through that, it will give me a chance to also just talk about the formulas and how each of the shadows that I used today performed on my lids. So let's do this Lauren May slash Martina Lilly style and do individual swatches of each shade on my hand. This time I'm gonna go, or I'm gonna try to go from lightest to darkest, or at least do the pinks first before I move into the greens because uh, I think the greens are gonna leave quite a lot of color on my hand. So let's start with Lucy right here, which is a matte light limestone. Now I didn't use this shade in this look today. I didn't use either of these more kind of neutral, kind of taupey shades, but I think these are actually quite exceptional because I swatched them yesterday when I first got the palette and they do have this beautiful green undertone. They're like beigey taupes, but with a green undertone. I'm actually gonna go into Faye next, which is the slightly darker kind of version of this shade. It's described as a matte, medium, muted clay. I'm just gonna put it right next so we can see them compared to each other. These are both powder mattes. There's actually only one cream to powder, and I'll let you know when we get to that one. But there are those two shades, and they're really gorgeous. I can't wait to just do like a super natural, super neutral look with like this all over the lid kind of, and then this to just deepen it up a little bit. I think that's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Sticking in that color family, we're gonna go with Oscar next. And Oscar is described as a metallic, light, medium, vintage champagne. That's gorgeous. I think that'll pair beautifully with those two mattes we just looked at too. Every time I see the shade, I've watched a couple of reviews. I've tried to hold off from watching too many reviews of this palette before I had a chance to play with it and form my own thoughts, but I have watched a couple. And every time I see someone swatch this Oscar shade, it takes me back to, do you remember Charlize Theron at the, I think 2004 Oscars? That was the first time I became aware of Charlize Theron as a person basically. And she was just so, so breathtaking. And I remember being really taken with that old Hollywood 20s glam look that she had going on. And this shade just reminds me of that so much, partly because of the name Oscar, I guess, but also just that kind of almost like platinum champagne just really reminds me of that whole look that she had that year. Let's get into some of the pinks. So I'm gonna start with the lightest pink here, which is called Holly, and it's a matte light neutral rose. And this one is featured quite heavily in my eye look today. It was the first shade that I went in with in my crease and it's also on the lower lash line. I actually love this shade. It's, uh, it takes a bit of building, but you can get there or you can just start with more, but especially when I'm first using a palette for the very first time, I like to build really gradually. I think it's a perfect kind of light pink color. It's not peachy at all. It's not one that's turning orange. It's just that beautiful kind of light babyish type pink. And then we have our darker pink matte here, which is called Belle, matte medium dusty rose. And this is another one I'm really happy with. I think you can almost kind of see the mauvey purpley notes in that rose, which again keeps it from going orange keeps it firmly in that kind of cooler, neutral, rosy pink category. And it pairs beautifully with the lighter pink that we just looked at. Then we have our metallic dark pink, which is not listed on the Sephora website for some reason, but this is in the sparkling metallic formula. And similar to the darker pink matte that we just looked at, you can see that it's firmly in that pink category, not going too peachy. It's got a little bit of mauvey purpliness to it. And I did use that one in this look as well. I also used the darker pink matte. Let's do Flutter next, which is 
the only chroma crystal in this palette. It's described as a sparkling light champagne pink. I personally don't really pick up much pink from this one. I guess I can see a little bit, but I don't know that I would think of that on my own. But that's a beautiful, very highly reflective shade and it works really well as a topper. I used that to kind of top off the middle of my lid today and it was gorgeous. So I think it's gonna work equally well over the pink tones and the green tones and even the taupey tones because it is quite neutral, but a little bit icy. Let's get into the greens, shall we? So let's start with Fringe right here, which is described as a matte pastel sage green. This one's beautiful. I wasn't going to use this in my look, but I ended up just kind of finishing off blending my metallic greens and darker mattes kind of into that original light pink shade with this. Did a really beautiful job of that. I'm gonna do the next one right next to it because I wanna see how they look next to each other. So I'm gonna do sage next. And sage is described as a matte medium sage green. It's a little bit more blue toned than um, fringe right here, but they're very similar colors. It's just that sage is a little bit deeper and a little bit more blue toned. I'm also going to pull evergreen into this same little triad of swatches. So this is the one cream to powder in this palette and evergreen is a medium dark sage green. And the cream to powders usually look darker in the pan than on the eyes but you can see we're getting actually decent depth from that one. So I did end up using all three of these greens in my look today. And I just love the way those cream to powders spread and diffuse. They just kind of keep going and going. Now into the metallic greens, and I think I'll do the same thing and swatch all three of them together. So starting off with Marlin which is a metallic light medium sage green. So we're getting a lot of very similar descriptions for these green shades. They're all being described as sage greens of varying depths and varying finishes. So there's Marlin, that one is absolutely stunning. That's the one that's kind of in the middle of my lid. And then we're gonna go into Oz right here which is a metallic medium dark muted forest green. Okay, so this one's described as a forest green as opposed to a sage, so that one right there. And that's the one that I have on the outermost part of my lid. And you can see it is described as a forest and I think that is reflected in the tone. It's much more what I kind of think of as more of a, a true green or a just slightly warmer green than the sagey ones that we're getting that have quite a lot of blue in them. And then we have Palladian, which is a metallic pastel sage green. And this one is super bright as well. And that's what I have on the innermost part of my lid. And now I think we're finally at our last two going to do these together as well. So we have Jazzy right here, which is a metallic dark cool brown. This one I was actually really impressed with. I used this to deepen up my outer corner. I just applied it really lightly um, in very thin layers over top of that evergreen cream to powder and it did a beautiful job of deepening up the outer corner without changing the color too much. I was kind of worried it was going to become a muddy brown kind of mess, but actually the brownness of it didn't come through very much. It just kind of deepened up and further contoured on top of that dark green, so it worked really, really well. And then last we have Maxi, which is a metallic medium dark warm taupe.
And I especially wanted to swatch these next to each other because this to me is the most annoying thing about this palette is that these two shades are so similar. This one's a little deeper and cooler. This one's slightly lighter. It's still pretty cool, but you can see a little touch of warmth in the undertone. But both of these do not need to be in this palette, in my opinion. I'll insert the whole palette swatch now so you can see that. But let's just talk about the color story and the shades that are actually in here. Now, obviously, this is a very specific color story. You have to want to use these colors in order to get this palette. But I think that if you like these colors, then you'll be very happy with the quality of this palette and the way that these shades work together. For me, I think I will probably tend to do more monochromatic looks, so I'll either stick to a green look or that kind of beigey, taupey look or a pink look when I'm using this palette because that's just the way that I think it will work best. Although I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out today with focusing on more of the greens on the lid and then the pinks on the lower lash line. I think they blend together really well. And I also think that the more taupey neutral shades in here will pair well with either of those two more colorful color stories. However, I don't think this is a perfect palette. I've already talked about how I think that these two shades are redundant. We really only need one of those. Another thing that I wish were in here is a light pink metallic. I know they're describing the Chroma Crystal as a pink, but to me it's really more of kind of like an icy pearly shade. And I would like to see a pink more like one that we find in the Retro palette, something more like this Glitz shade here. So I actually can foresee myself probably popping out uh, this shade right here and replacing it with the glitz from the retro palette. I just think that that's something that is missing in this palette. And I initially was going to say that we needed a deep matte brown in this, but I think that Jazzy actually does a really good job of what I would want a matte brown to do. Even though it's a metallic, I think it works really well and almost performs both functions, matte and metallic. So I think that's fine the way it is. Everything else I think I'm pretty happy with. I can't really think of other things that I would personally want to change about this. I think the quality is excellent. Every single shadow that I used, I didn't use all of them, but I used most of them. And from the swatches, I can tell that the quality of all of these shadows is really beautiful. They blend together beautifully. The metallics are really gorgeous, super smooth and creamy and just so satisfying to work with. And I think this color story is just so much fun. So I think that's all all I really have to say about this palette, at least for now, I'm excited to keep using this and playing around with these colors. I do love this color story. I love the retro theme. The packaging is beautiful as well. I should mention that. I'm assuming by now you've already seen other reviews on this, so um, I don't need to go too in depth about the packaging, but it's, it's really gorgeous and very special packaging. And I think I've said all I needed to say about those new shades of the Auric Lip Balms. So let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love for you to do so. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.